So if you're someone who drinks almond milk, soy milk or oat milk, or you're looking to give up cow's milk and switch to plant-based alternatives, then this video might help you out. I've been trying out two machines that enable you to easily make your own plant-based milk at home. I bought an expensive one and I bought the cheapest decent one that I could find. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna let you know if there's any big differences between how they actually perform and which one I think is the better option. I've always wanted to see what these machines are like. I used to make almond milk the manual way with a pestle and mortar, which does take a bit more time, but I've never used a machine. So using these two machines will be interesting. I bought both of these machines with my own money. You're about to get my own opinion as to whether making your own milk with these machines is a practical and worthwhile endeavor. And if there's a big difference in buying the cheapest rock bottom priced machine versus a machine that has a few more features and is of course gonna be a little bit more expensive. There will of course be a link to each machine in the description if you do like the look of either of them. Now the question is why would you even consider owning a milk making machine like these when you can just buy a carton of almond milk off the shelf. When you look on the ingredients on your average carton of almond milk, you might be surprised at how much actual almonds you get in there. Looking at the most popular brand of almond milk that I have here in London, you only get 2.3% of actual almonds. The other stuff is things they put in there to make it look and have the texture of cow's milk. Things like emulsifiers or E-numbers, stabilizers and oils are added to that low percentage of almonds to give you a more milky consistency and improve the shelf life, which is of course a good thing for the company and the supermarket, but it doesn't necessarily give you the best nutrients nutrient-rich milk possible. There are also, of course, a lot of questions about what these added ingredients have on your health too. A lot of manufacturers have picked up on the fact that printing out each and every E number included in a product actually scares people away. So a lot of the time you'll just see it written as one word, emulsifiers. So just be aware that if it says emulsifiers, it's probably got a long list of E numbers in there. Almonds are, of course, rich in protein, fiber, calcium, magnesium, and they're easily one of the most nutrient-packed nuts there are out there. And I personally love to include them in my diet. But in my view, you're really losing out on a lot of these nutrients if you're just buying supermarket milks. I know that convenience plays a massive part in just picking up a carton off the shelf, but I just can't get over only getting 2.3%. Also, I find the taste of supermarket bought almond milk isn't as good as just making it yourself. To me, it just tastes really watered down. If you make it yourself, you're getting more of the nutrients and less of the dodgy stuff. So let me talk you through these two machines that I bought. You can make milk from oats, soybeans, walnuts, peanuts, and you can make soups in there too. But there are quite a few options. But this is the price here. Myomat model. I think I'm saying that correctly. Myomat or Myomat. It isn't the most expensive on the market, but when I looked into the features and what it actually offers, some of the pricier models didn't have some of the features included in this. It also has a recently upgraded part from its earlier model. The upgraded grinder that you see here has more blades than the previous one did. It's a lot more powerful than some of the others that I saw. Now, why is this significant? A stronger motor and an improved grinder should enable you to get more from what you put in it. In theory, the milk you get from this thing should have a stronger taste because it's done a better job of blending and grinding the almonds all together evenly. This cheaper model that I bought, like the Mio, has a stainless steel interior, which is of course great, no plastic in there, but surprisingly, it actually has more blades than the Mio Mat has. So I was interested to see if there would be any difference in their performance. The Mio Mat has three blades, and the smaller machine has a total of 10 blades, all intricately laced together. The three main differences between the two machines from a visual standpoint is the blades inside, the amount of liquid each one can hold. The Mio can hold 1.2 liters while the smaller model can only hold 600 milliliters and lastly the amount of settings that each one has. The Mio has more settings to select from while the cheaper machine is a lot more simple in its offering. So the process is really simple you really just need good quality almonds and water. You also have to make sure that you give them a wash and soak them for at least four hours before putting them in the machine. This not only softens the nut a little bit but it gives the milk a smoother taste and texture. It's better to go for organic nuts if you can. If you want to make oat milk look for organic organic jumbo oats or steel cut oats. You can also, of course, add your own little ingredients in the process to make it taste even better. I sometimes like to add vanilla pods or a little bit of nutmeg. I don't know why, it just makes it taste a little better. I think what makes both of these machines really cool is that you can make soup in them too. I'm not a big soup drinker myself, but it's good to have that option if you want it. You just put all the ingredients in and you've got hot soup made in less than an hour. But there was a slight difference in the consistency and smoothness in what they produced. Not a major difference, but it was noticeable. To my surprise with the more expensive Mio it took a little bit more experimenting to get the milk to the consistency or to my liking but the cheaper 
more simple models seem to be able to do it just by default. You've got a total of eight programs on the Mio. Raw milk, cereal milk, soy milk, creamy soup, chunky soup, porridge, and smoothie. It can be an overwhelming selection of features and not all of them work as well as you want them to. I tried out each one. For some reason, the creamy soup setting makes a better milk than the actual raw milk setting does. So go figure. On the Mio, the smoothie function was actually quite disappointing. I actually think that the shape of the jug doesn't lend itself well to doing everything. But with the cheaper model, it just did its thing. I didn't really have to look at the instructions either. Definitely less of a learning curve with that one. It might not be a big deal for you, but the way the Mio opens is slightly impractical for me. The blade and the grinder bit being connected to the lid. When you open it up, you have to make sure that you lay it down somewhere where it isn't going to roll off the table and fall. You have to also dry it off before you set it down because then it's going to drip a little and it's going to create a little bit of mess. So it can be a little bit of a messier process to use the Mio. I also didn't like how it connects to the base through that handle. You have to remember that it isn't a hinge and you have to remember to open it in that way. You have to match the lid and the connection point to the handle. The top control unit and blade is all one piece, which overall makes it feel a little bit more top heavy. I would much prefer the blades and the control being in the base of the unit because that would make the unit more bottom heavy and it would make it sit on the table more securely. Overall it just feels a little clunky and clumsy and it doesn't feel very secure to me. But it is a bigger machine and it feels a lot more robust but it's not for everybody. Now with the cheaper machine like I said it was much easier to use day to day for my almond milk and in terms of consistency of what it produced it was pretty much spot on every time. It also takes up less space in the kitchen which is better if you're someone who doesn't have as much countertop space or if you've just got a smaller kitchen. Now in my overall opinion I would say that both of these machines work very well in the time that I've used them they both did a very good job at making almond milk and the extra features of the Mio mat on paper make it a better buy but for my personal needs just having a simple machine that doesn't take up too much space in the kitchen this cheaper model did a more than good enough job even though the Mio has its better grinder parts larger capacity and stronger output the difference between the output wasn't enough for me to be amazed now something I forgot to go into about the Mio mat compared to the smaller machine is how noisy it is. Now have a listen. It runs at about the same volume level as my washing machine. I know that blenders in comparison are generally loud, but they're not on for as long, so you will really notice the volume of this machine. But to be fair, it is advertised as being on the more powerful side, so it's gonna have more of a noise to it. So I think it really depends on how much milk you intend to make at any one time, really. Focusing more on the cheaper machine, not really an awful lot to say about the cheaper machine, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. The strength of the machine is its simplicity, a better experience, and it's easier to figure out. It takes up less space and it's easier to clean up too and a lot less noise but overall both did what they say they do. It comes down to your preference really and realistically how much milk you intend to make in one go. The 600 milliliters of the smaller more cheaper machine was more than enough for me. I've actually stored the extra milk that I've made with the 600 milliliter machine in the freezer so I'm pretty much set for probably the next two weeks. If you've got a bigger family and you drink lots of milk then of course you should look at something like the Mio with its 1.2 liter capacity. It might appeal more to you but as I mentioned I will put a link to both of these machines in the description if you want to get more info. So that was my quick take on these two homemade nut milk making machines. Have you used one yourself? And if you had to choose one of these, which one would you go for? Let me know in the comments below. So with that being said, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.